Welcome to Module 1, where we are all ready. First of all, we started with sexy sauerkraut. Remember our sauerkraut? Here we have it, it's all finished bubbling. We'll take out the weight, take out the glass weight, take out the cabbage leaves, those outside cabbage leaves. We don't reuse those, but we do give them a good squeeze. So give it a good squeeze to get all that liquid out. See, it's, there's no more bubbles. All the bubbles have stopped. The green or the white cabbage, whatever you prefer to call it, has turned to a beige. See the colour? It's all nice and beige there. We've produced beautiful brine. So we make sure that that's always under the brine. This is now at its four weeks mark. So it's been sitting out for four weeks at room temperature. And to my taste buds, it's absolutely beautiful. You could try it at three weeks, depending on your temperature. Our temperature has been quite high, so four weeks has brought it. It's still nice and crunchy. No, no salty taste, just superb, superb. And of course in module seven, we shall show you how to, to mix it in. Now I've got a mouthful of sauerkraut. But there we are. That was just the cabbage salt. And of course we added a, a few little flower garden flowers to give it a little bit of creativity and we can eat those flowers as well. So there we have the classic type sauerkraut already. We also did a turmeric sauerkraut. This one we didn't actually put the little weight in. We just used the outside cabbage leaves. And that was fine, that kept everything submerged. Because remember that's always secret, suffocate it suffocate the cabbage. Always covered in brine and all will be fine. So there, once again, we give that a nice little squeeze. Look at all that beautiful brine that it's produced itself. Isn't that just lovely? There's no bubbles. It's all ready. Of course, this one doesn't turn to beige because it had all that turmeric in it. But it's still got nice crunch. It's not too soft, not too firm. Just beautiful. I'm tempted to have a taste, but I won't because otherwise you won't, won't be able to understand me. So there we go. That's our beautiful... Now what we'll do now is we'll refrigerate it. And each time that you take it out and use it and make it into a sauerkraut salad or whatever creation that you make with it, and we'll be doing lots in Module 7. And of course your sauerkraut book has masses of recipes that get your creative juices going. But always make sure that it's always submerged so when you take some just give it a little push down and when you put it back into the fridge once again now it will keep on fermenting in the fridge but it would be at a lot slower rate of course as you always hear me speak the most preferred way of fermenting your sauerkraut is in a massive big crop but of course you have to have a massive harvest so and the bottles are good for just little one-off like if you want to do a Christmas kraut and you do like a cranberry and fennel. But that's like your five litre crock. And that of course will produce massive gut loving brine. And it really enhances the vitamins because it's in that perfect, perfect container that allows it to breathe. And it keeps it totally oxygen free because you have these two little weights that actually sit at the top like that. Then that little moat that goes around the, the outside, that's where you fill up the water. And that's what the only job that you have to do is to make sure that that water's always filled. And a really good little tip is that if when you do put the water in, just put a little couple of drops of vegetable glycerine because it, won't, it, it keeps it nice and moist and it won't disappear as fast. So we're going on, so we've done our, we've strained it, it's already into the refrigerator. So that's our sauerkraut and we'll discard those. We'll put the little outside cabbage leaves into the compost. Now we go on to the gut loving tonic. Remember we made our sauerkraut tonic, so I'm not sure where yours is at, but this one, it, this one was at the 14 day mark. So it's well, it's, it's ready, it's stopped bubbling and it's produced a lovely taste. Uh, the flavour's lovely, there's no salty taste there whatsoever. So we'll strain that. Now when 
we're not going to actually use that cabbage. Uh, it's the brine that's got the power in it. And this is the one where we spoke about that you can use as a salt replacement, but you can use it in everything. This is your introduction to fermentation. This is where everybody should start with the sauerkraut tonic. Teaspoon a day, that's it. Increase it until you get to over, say, about a week of a teaspoon a day. Go to a tablespoon a day. And then you can increase it up even, even further till you can have two little small cups of it a day. And that's plenty, but add it into all your food, especially for your children. You can um, add it to dips, you can add it, add it to salad dressings. Anywhere you would think of like a bonigo, you can add it to a dressing like that. This, um, you don't have to discard it. You can throw that into like a, um, a veggie stew or something like that. It's not gonna have probiotic power, power in there when you cook it, but it is pretty spent. It has all been um, brought out. This is a really good thing because you see a lot of plate people around showing you how to make sauerkraut and they actually pour brine on top. So there's no power left in that if you're pouring your own brine on because as you can see, it has produced plenty of its own brine, plenty that you don't have to make your own. So with that, you can pour it back into a bottle. I pour it into a much smaller bottle than the bottle it came out of, but we'll just pour that in there for now. And a funnel is a good idea. Of course, I wasn't organized with a funnel, but there we go. So that's gut loving tonic. The father of medicine, Hippocrates, he did state that all disease begins in the gut. But then there's another father, the father of homeopathy. And he actually was a father. He was a Bavarian priest, if you do your Google search on him. And I love the way that he summed up what this was. It's the broom that cleans the womb. So it sweeps everything out, um, especially for your little children and even big children, even adults. We all have par can get parasites and things like that. So that's really great for like worms. And you know, we know this time when they talk about lunatics when the, the moon comes out, what a horrible word, but lunar. And you know, you've got, got a loony and we certainly don't want anyone going loony. So get, get some, some of this into everybody. This is just, it's just tonic. Um, for babies, I've had so many people that have come back to me that have had colicky babies and they've had to bottle feed them and you know, they've just become so colicky. Just a little, just a fingertip drop of this into the bottle and it's taken away all the colic. It is just amazing stuff, it really is. That's just, it's just powerful. It's just the most powerful food that I could ever think of. So easy to make. Just remember that when you get down to about half a bottle, make sure that you make another bottle so that you never run out. Kvass was our next part of module one. Kvass meaning sour beverage all the way from Russia and there's plenty of ways of making kvass. The traditional way was a way of using the leftover rye bread. But remember we made one and we used all our garden produce. We used the fresh, the fresh beets, daikon radish because the daikon counteracts the yeasty effect of sweet veggies like the, the beetroot and it's pretty neutral in taste. Daikon is one of those veggies that is really wonderful in the fermentation world. Uh, especially if you're doing something like carrots, add a little bit of daikon and you won't get that yeasty, that real, oh, quite alcohol taste, which you don't want in vegetables. It's all right if you're making, making a, an alcohol beverage, but we don't certainly don't want it with our kvass. So these are all the outside cabbage leaves that we used. We used a little selection of everything we had. That was the Savoy cabbage, the red cabbage. Uh, we put in... That was just to stop any little floaters, keep it under there, keep it all oxygen free. We used lemongrass. Now that's from my garden, it gives it a beautiful flavour. There, there were your little, um, your little daikon, the little, which is the white radish. And of course, these little fellas like this, you can, um, what I'll do with these tonight, I'm gonna pop all these little veggies, not the lemongrass, not the outside cabbage leaves, but all these little fellas, I'm going to pop those into a roast veggie dish and, you know, they'll all be fine. The, there's big chunks of turmeric, because this is all from my garden, uh, the beetroot chunks. Of course, we didn't peel them because they were straight out of the organic garden and 
there's no, there's definitely no need to peel the outside part of it because the mighty invisible organisms that live in the soil, well, that's where they all attach to, the outside, so why peel it off? And there's no need to grate because if you're going to grate it when you make a kvass, it's going to make the invisible organisms work so fast on it and you're going to end up with a really sour result. So keep them into chunks and you can use that for lots of things. Um, I often make a little relish with them, add some fresh veggies and, and just blitz it up and you've got a nice little, little um, fresh relish. It's a bit messy, I, would, I, I should have had another strainer, my apologies. Here we go. So we just strain all that off and then have a little bit of cabbage in the bottom because remember we followed on from making sauerkraut was the way that we made this kvass. We followed with a little bit of leftover of the cabbage. Once again I'll add that into my little dish tonight, my little veggie dish. Of course we don't cook with fermented foods, the gut loving goddess tippers that if we cook with them we kill the bacteria but in this sense it's pretty well spent. So it'll go into a nice, a nice little dish. Now just have a look at this. Just have a look at this, would you? Oh my gosh, I wish you could taste it, but you're going to make it. So you'll get to know what it tastes like. It is just superb. This is very cleansing. It's very cleansing. It's just so beautiful. And once again, start slow. Start very slow till you can get up to a cup, say two little small cups a day but do start small. This has lots of uses and you'll see that in module seven. You'll even see how we use it as a coloring, how we color coconut and all that with it. You can use it in um, mocktails, you can dilute it. This little drink here has been diluted with a little bit of sparkling water. You can use still water. And all the little additions there are straight from my garden today. So, chin chin.